Today we're going to talk about something that's top of mind for any home labber, especially those that are budget conscious, low power server hacks. We'll dive into optimizing both VMware ESXi and Proxmox to squeeze out as much efficiency as possible. So whether you're using mini PCs or enterprise hardware, these tips will help you to run more power efficient home labs, put money back into your pocket so we can buy other gear that we just simply do not need. So let's get started. Now a word about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Nakivo. Are you looking for a powerful and reliable backup solution for your home lab or enterprise environment? Look no further than Nakivo Backup and Replication. Nakivo is an excellent data protection software that offers comprehensive backup and recovery options and lets you use your NAS or a simple VM deployment as a backup appliance. Nakivo supports a wide range of environments, including Proxmox VE, VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, KVM, and EC2 instances, along with SaaS platforms like Microsoft 365. Plus, they offer a free version for up to 10 VMs, and that makes it an ideal choice for both home lab setups and enterprise backups. In the home lab, power consumption is a big deal, especially if you're running a home lab 24 by 7 by 365 like I am. Your servers are actually going to spend a lot of time idle, which means idle power consumption can add up over time. Even small savings, say one or two watts here and there, can lead to noticeable reductions in your power bill especially if you're running multiple servers or multiple mini PCs. Today, I'm gonna to share some specific tools and techniques to reduce your power usage for both VMware ESXi and Proxmox. Let's start first with VMware ESXi. You might think that ESXi is pretty well optimized, and it is, but most enterprise hypervisors are not necessarily optimized for low power consumption. Rather, they're optimized more for performance, as you would expect. There are still some tweaks that we can apply, though, to save on power use. First, we're going to check out tweaks that we can make to the power management policy in VMware ESXi. Head to the power management policy settings found under the hardware settings in your VMware ESXi host client. This is where you can adjust your host power profile. By default, ESXi usually runs and is installed out of the box in balanced mode, or some may be running in high performance mode if they've gone in and deliberately set it that way. But you can switch this also to low power mode, and this mode prioritizes energy savings when your server isn't under heavy load. Now, one hack that many may not think about changing is the CPU power states in VMware ESXi. This is similar to the C states and P states tuning that you might be able to do on Linux-based systems. In VMware ESXi, you can enable deep sleep states or the C states for your CPUs to reduce power consumption when the system is idle. And you'll need to enable this first in the BIOS of your system, and then we can make sure that ESXi is configured to manage those states. So let's take a look at the BIOS C state settings. So let's look at enabling these BIOS C states, and I'm currently on a B-Link SEI 14 mini PC. So just to show you guys where this is located on a typical mini PC with the Aptio setup uh, and my BIOS uh, configuration. So if we navigate over to the advanced tab, in our BIOS, we're going to see power and performance. So let's drill into power and performance. Then we're going to select CPU power management control. So let's drill in there. And then what I'm going to do is simply up arrow because the setting that we want to look at is closer to the bottom. And if I up arrow enough, you're going to see the C states currently are disabled on this mini PC. So if I drill in there, We've got the option to enable those C states, and this opens up quite a few more configuration options, but we can buzz through here and actually take a look at what some of the C state settings do. We can see the enhanced C states. The CPU will switch to minimum speed when all cores enter C state. We've got demotion, we've got undemotion, many other settings here. So most of these are enabled after you enable that global C states setting, and this is what we want. This will allow your mini PCs 
server to throttle back and save a tremendous amount of power over time, especially as we can allow ESXi to manage the power consumption of the physical device based on the load and the demand for load in that home lab environment. So now all we need to do is we need to exit out of this and save our changes and I'm going to navigate over to save and exit, save changes and exit, and then we should be good for the reboot. After that, you can fine tune the behavior using ESXi's advanced power settings. To access those, you can use the ESXCLI commands. For example, setting the power.cpu policy to power saving instead of balance will prioritize energy efficiency over performance. And let's look at that ESXCLI command that we can run from the command line on our VMware ESXi host in an SSH session. Now let's look at the advanced ESX CLI command that allows us to look at the CPU policy. Also, I want to make note that when you change the power management policy, it does affect this setting. So let's take a look and list out the setting that we have set currently. We're going to see the power CPU policy. It's a string value currently set to balance. Now I had set the power management policy back to balance just to demonstrate this for you guys. So do note that when you swap to low power, this value will reflect correctly. However, as you change the C states and looking at various tweaks, it's a good idea to verify that these settings have been changed and are managed correctly. So if we want to change this to a low power setting from the command line, we can do that with the ESX CLI command. And we're going to basically just copy the command except for set. And we're going to go to the same node, power CPU policy, and then it requires the string value. So we have to pass the dash S value into this command. We're going to set this to low power in quotes. We can see that it's set. We didn't have any errors. So if we go back to list, we can see now the string value is set to low power. And this is what we want. If we want our mini PC or server at home to be as efficient as possible from a power perspective. Now let's pivot over to Proxmox. One of my favorite tools for optimizing power usage that I've been playing around with lately in Proxmox is a Linux command line utility known as PowerTop. This Linux utility gives you a detailed view of what's eating up power, number one, on your Proxmox host. And it also allows you to apply tweaks in real time. So that's really, really cool. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. With PowerTop, you can adjust settings like USB auto suspend, CPU power states, and wakeups from various hardware components. And if you want a quick win, in other words, allowing it to automatically run through and configure for better power efficiency, you can use the built-in parameter that is dash dash auto dash tune. This basically just goes through and applies all of the recommended power saving tweaks from PowerTop all at once. Let's take a look at running the PowerTop command as well as this parameter auto tune. So on my Proxmox host, what I've done is installed the PowerTop command. And just to show you guys what that command looks like, it's very simply apt install PowerTop. And you can pass the Y to confirm it automatically. So I've already done that. So now all you have to do to run PowerTop is just simply type PowerTop. And when you run it, it's going to bring up something similar to the look and feel of like a top command where you've got columns and information that is refreshed in real time and you're able to see this information, really great information in case you want to know which modules, which processes are consuming the most power. And, and without a tool like this to give you that insight, you would not be able to know exactly which processes and tweaks that can potentially save you the most power in power efficiency uh, tweaks and configuration. Now to get to the different menus, you can simply use your tab key, or if you want to go to reverse, you can do shift tab. If you just tab over, we can see various information 
information, idle stats, frequency stats, it gives you a list of your CPU information, frequencies, device stats, of course, very intuitive here. You're going to be able to see which devices are plugged in, power usage, description, those types of things. And then also the tunables tab shows you some quick wins of being able to optimize for power consumption. In other words, it's going to show you which devices or processes potentially have room for improvement. They make no bones about how it's uh, worded here when you see bad. Uh, it means that we can uh, optimize these uh, particular uh, components and processes for much better power efficiency. And then also what devices are causing wake-ups. All of this information is very valuable when you're looking to really tweak and tune on power consumption. So what I'm going to do is just control C out of this and I'm going to show you guys the parameter power top and then we're also going to do dash dash auto dash tune. So power top dash dash auto dash tune. And if we hit enter, we see that it does several things. So now if we go back into power top and we navigate over to the tunables tab, we're going to see something much different. So as you see here, we no longer have the components or processes that are showing as bad from a power consumption standpoint. So much, much better. And just with those simple tweaks, you're going to save roughly anywhere from like one watt to two watts, depending on your hardware or depending on the number of components and processes that are noted to be bad in this list. Now, one of the things to note with PowerTop, while it is a great utility, the tweaks that it introduces are not persistent after reboot. So you need to do some extra work to make those changes persistent. To make the changes stick, you can create a systemd service that runs PowerTop automatically on startup. Let's quickly take a look at how we can create that systemd service to run the autotune parameter at startup. We can create a service file and what you see here on the screen in this SSH session is me doing just that. So we're just using nano, we're creating the Etsy systemd system PowerTop.service service file. And if I hit enter, you're going to see the contents of that file that we need to add. We've got a unit stanza, description, power top, auto tuning. We've got the type of service. We've got the exec start stanza, user S bin power top. And here is our auto tune parameter that will get called so that we can implement those auto tune configurations at startup. So I'm just going to save out of that. And then the final step that we need to do is we need to enable the power top service. So we do that with the system CTL enable power top dot service, which is what we named the service file. So we just hit enter and the service is enabled. Now let's dive into another useful tweak for reducing power consumption in Proxmox using the CPU frequency util package and adjusting the CPU scaling governor. The scaling governor controls how your CPU adjusts its frequency based on workload. And and by default, it may be set to performance mode, which is what my mini PC was when I was curious at, as to the mode that it was default configured to. I found that it was default in performance mode, and this prioritizes speed over power savings. Now we can change this to power save mode, and this lowers the CPU frequency when it's idle, and all of those things help to save power. You can set the CPU governor to power save mode, and this will ensure that the CPU CPU prioritizes energy efficiency when it doesn't need to be running at full speed, which let's be honest in the home lab is most of the time. This command applies the power save mode to all of your CPU cores and it tells them to scale down their frequency when the server is going into that idle state. Now by adjusting this scaling governor to power save, you can in some systems significantly reduce power consumption, especially if your server spins spends a lot of time idle. And just keep in mind that this may slightly reduce performance under heavy workloads, but for most home lab environments, it's a trade-off worth considering. And for the most part, you probably won't even notice it. Another simple but effective way to reduce power consumption is by running your servers in headless mode. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, basically running your servers without a monitor, keyboard, or mouse attached allows you to reduce the overall power footprint. These peripherals consume power 
And while it might seem small, every watt counts when you're trying to lower your overall energy footprint. So by running your servers headless most of the time, you're going to be managing your servers remotely anyway, most likely through the web interface or through an SSH session. Keeping this extra hardware plugged in is just going to cause that server device to consume more power. Now, if you're using IPMI or another remote management tool, you can still easily access your server's console as well without needing that dedicated monitor and this is one more step to building an energy efficient home lab setup now finally one of the obvious home lab power saving tips is to simply shut down your servers when they are not being used this may seem simple but it is definitely a trick that i have used especially in the hot summer months when you know you're not going to be using your home lab for hours possibly shutting down the ancillary servers and leaving only the necessary servers that may be running core services like dns up and running and you're also going to save on those cooling costs, especially if you live in a hot climate where that is going to be concerned. So how do these tweaks affect power consumption? Well, in my testing, switching Proxmox to power saving mode and using PowerTop shaved about one to two watts off of my server's idle consumption. And on the VMware side, I noticed that enabling low power mode in the ESX power management policy, as well as C states also brought that idle power consumption down significantly. Now, optimizing for low power is something that every home labber should consider, and I think that many are already thinking about this since I see a lot of home lab enthusiasts interested in mini PCs just for that reason. So whether you're using ESXi or Proxmox, there are a variety of hacks that will help you to get more efficiency out of your hardware and to save on those power costs over time. Let me know if you found any other cool power saving tips for your servers in the comments below. These are only a few recommended hacks. They are by no means a comprehensive list and I'm very curious to know what you guys are using just for this use case to reduce that power profile, reduce your cooling costs, and still have a very effective but inexpensive home lab. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more cool content. Keep on home labbing, stay safe out there, and I will see you on the next one.